what's going on everybody this is Mehul and welcome to your 37th Google Chrome extension development tutorial in which we'll be doing and basically we'll be creating an app which would allow your extension to exchange information from your remote server and you can do that in a couple of ways you can either create your database or you can read or write from a file now before starting this mini web series of how to set up your own database and retrieve data from SQL and JavaScript and all that stuff I highly recommend that if you are following my tutorial and after completion of this um, four or five tutorials how many of these tutorials would be required I don't know exactly but after you have developed your app if you're going to deploy it for commercial purpose or you are launching your website then I would highly recommend you to get your application tested by a certified um, pen tester and you know ethical white hat hackers because usually the websites which allow the direct interaction of user from the server end and you know like updating your SQL database or reading writing files directly can probably make your site vulnerable to a lot of attacks so I highly discourage if you can find an alternative without doing this but for people who really want to do make their extension interact with their server side like this extension is um, a good one for the person who's looking for like getting some information from the user and then storing it on his own database that is fine because this is a bit risky because you know the files we will be using in this extension can be used by attacker to send arbitrary data to your server by modifying whatever is sent so keeping that in mind let's start with the series so for this series we'll need a couple of things to set up first <coughs> I'll be doing with the database integration in this one because it is kind of popular and mm, you know it makes sense to work with so for that I'm gonna use localhost for this extension but obviously you would be using your own server online but that should be pretty much same as long as you are on Linux hosting because PHP my admin I guess is level on Linux hosting only <coughs> okay so first of all launch XAMPP now this little panel will allow you to have MySQL which would be our database and Apache which would be used as a PHP server to run on your computer now go to localhost and okay so here it is PHP my admin now PHP my admin is an interface you would usually see as an icon in your cPanel if you log in into your cPanel if you go down in your cPanel you'll see that it is, it is something like manage your MySQL tables or um, you know open PHP my admin something like that but the interface is quite same because I've worked with HostGator and GoDaddy and they both support that so I know that so first of all you need to create a new database so click here to create a new database now this database would be the database which we will be using in our Chrome extension to interact with so let me think which application we should create for this Chrome extension and I guess um, what we can do is we can create a simple ebook extension um, you know uh, just suppose that you have a website and you have launched your new ebook but you need um, to collect some email addresses you want to do some email marketing and you want to collect email addresses plus you want to install you want users to install your own extension so that you can monetize that extension as well and moreover collect the ebook as well uh, collect the email IDs of the user as well so what we can do is that we'll create this database as email IDs and leave it as it is 
now since our database has been created click here on the email IDs and right here you have to create a table now a table is pretty much where your all of your information would be stored and for this I guess we don't need more than one table so here what I'm gonna do is I'll type user info and I guess I should have um, not entered a space out there let's see if I can get rid of that um, okay let's just do this once more again because um, space might create problems while we are um, doing the database programming so let's just start again email IDs or let's just name this IDs and here I'm gonna create a table information okay so now we have four rows but I don't think we need four we just need um, two I guess so I'm gonna keep both of these as name and type is text and this one is email and that's it and I guess we could create an auto increment field as well which would be the ID and this AI would automatically increment this so that um, you know if you want to delete any email address or you want to do something else then you can do that now I have chosen this kind of theme like of collecting email ID because it cannot be exploited yeah it can be exploited but you know um, it's not very efficient for a hacker to spend a lot of time to exploit this because at max what the attacker can do is that he or she can flood your database with a ton of fake emails but you could eventually put a restriction on how many calls from an IP address is being made or how many calls a how many connections a JavaScript file is making with your PHP file now uh, let's leave that for um, another tutorial let's keep the first things first so we have integer type of ID and this is AI that is automatic increment and I guess I forgot that I had a zoom feature in this one okay so that might look better now so now let's just click save uh, I'm sorry if you guys are getting a headache might just get rid of that so now we have created our table and since it says mysql return empty set result ie zero rows now what we'll be doing is basically we would be creating a PHP script as well so PHP would act as a bridge between your front-end and back-end database so we'll be with Chrome extension calling or sending some data to this PHP script and I'll be thinking about that how we can um, you know let the PHP script recognize that this is a valid or a legit request and not a fake request from attacker so we can add some extent limit that your application may not be exploited so that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be starting off with the application so if you like this one then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching i'll see you then